here's how you know that the Democrats' propaganda game is stronger than almost any other force of evil that man has ever known. Obviously, they have an entire history that you can rely on, but if we just trace it back to 2016, they fixed their own primaries to stop Bernie Sanders. They screwed Bernie again in 2020. And in 2024, they have manipulated their own primary votes again. And still, still, there are poor, victimized citizens who really, really do believe, and they believe it deep into their bones, that the only way to save democracy is to vote blue no matter who. This is how you know their game is strong. But I will tell you that it is wearing thin. Finally, it is wearing thin. Tell me, how come RFK Jr. can't get on the primary? Just tell me. If, if this is a real democracy, you tell me yeah, yeah. why this guy who is a Kennedy, who is an environmental attorney, who's, you know, got even though he's got this voice issue, he's extremely articulate. Yeah. Very good speaker. Yeah. Very good recall of controversial ideas. But who doesn't have controversial ideas in the world of 2024? Who doesn't have controversial ideas? <laughs> Distorting yeah, right. what he says, which now makes yes, me uh, not trust you. Just say what is actually going on. Yes. And also talk about the evidence that shows that Biden is insanely corrupt. Because <laughs> both of those things are true, too. And if you don't want to talk about one because you think it props up the other, you're a part of the problem. Uh, wh you're, tre yeah, you're infantilizing you. the whole country and treating us like we're children. That's right. And we, we, we want to know, why didn't RFK, why couldn't he get in the primaries? Right. Like if this is real, if this if democracy is real, you guys don't just get to decide who runs your party against the will of the entire United States. But they're experts. But isn't that insane that no one has a problem with that, but everyone thinks that if Trump gets into office, he's going to become a dictator. There are people that believe that, man. And the sad thing for them, and I think the even sadder thing for us, if we don't find a way to outnumber these people, don't find a way to break through to them, is that this is just textbook Saul Alinsky 101. Accuse your opponent of what you're doing and create confusion and inculcate voters against evidence of your own guilt. This is exactly what they do. The Democrats are clearly the party of oppression. They are clearly the party of authoritarianism. And they prove it, man. In, in policy after policy and agenda after leftist agenda, they, they will protect your rights. They will protect your free speech. But only if they align with their own core beliefs. Only if they think that your rights serve them. If you step at all outside the carefully drawn lines, then they will destroy you. They'll tell the world you're a conspiracy theorist or a danger to democracy or whatever it is. This is exactly what they do every single time. It doesn't matter if you're Donald Trump or Tulsi Gabbard or Robert F. Kennedy Jr. If you're a threat to the machine, the machine will come for you. I will say, Mika, I, I was nodding along as Tom was just talking. I think this mm -hmm. is the biggest challenge there there is unquestionably trump has a broad support in his base as we've just been yeah. discussing and we've seen that play out in the primary that's the only piece though we know at this point he has problems among independents and problems with an expanded electorate but these third party candidates are a huge 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 problem and there's mm -hmm. a number of them if you look at rfk jr it's the name recognition issue as tom was just talking about and there are still states in this country uh, obviously i mean georgia is one of them i will name where the kennedy name is beloved right Right. Where people may just not right. still where they may just not know a lot about the fact that he is an anti vaxxer who's a conspiracy theorist. They don't know that yet. So this is something there is an aggressive effort that the campaign has been working with the Democratic National Committee on to run on this. But it needs to be broad. People need to be shouting it from the rooftops because this is the one of the biggest threats um, to Joe Biden being reelected is these third party candidates. If you look at Michigan, Mika, and I know uh, Sen uh, Alicia, Alyssa Slotkin is going to be on. Later, I almost called her yeah. senator. Congresswoman Alyssa Slotkin is going to be on <laughs> later. Michigan is a state where RFK, I think, is polling at 10 percent. Right. And so this is a oh. place where Joe Biden needs to win. And RFK Jr. is making a real threat to that. So it's good we're talking about it. It is a real threat. They're aware of it. But more needs to be done and more people need to be talking about it and aware. Just listen to that, man. This is the biggest challenge to Joe. So essentially what Propaganda Jen is saying is the real danger to Joe Biden is that the American people could have any other option. And of course, she thinks that Americans are so stupid that they would just vote for Kennedy because they recognize his name. And she cannot possibly believe the fact that there are still states in this country 
that would dare make up their own mind. And she says, this is a problem and more needs to be done about it. And let me know in the comments what you think she could possibly mean with that and what she thinks that she and her team of state approved mouthpieces could possibly do to protect Joe. Because the way it looks to me, they aren't stopping this. I am leaving the Democratic Party. <laughs> Even though I am leaving the party, I believe I am taking the best ideals and impulses with me. The, Demo the Democratic Party is supposed to be the party of compassion. It is supposed to be the party of diplomacy and science. It is supposed to be the party of civil liberties and free speech. And most importantly, the party of the middle class and the American dream. While I know many Democrats still abide by those values, I want to point out, and I've been in touch with many people in the Democratic Party, I do believe they've lost their way in their leadership. So that's Nicole Shanahan. That's RFK Jr.'s newly chosen vice presidential running mate. And she is everything that the left pretends to love. And I think she's coming for him. Actually, that's probably not exactly true. She's not everything the left loves. She's rich. And she's Asian. Democrats, they really don't like either of those characteristics. That's been proven. But other than that, she's female. She's powerful. She's super, almost AOC-like progressive. And here's the thing, man. In those places like Michigan, where RFK is polling as high as 10%, this is not going to help. This definitely is not going to help Joe Biden. But to settle in on uh, Nicole Shanahan is someone who a lot of resources, uh, a lot of that from Sergey Brin, uh, the, her ex-husband, uh, co-founder of Google. This is someone who's contributed to RFK Jr.'s campaign. Also someone who's a newcomer in politics, but she's also an expert in AI. So this gives a kind of an idea of where Kennedy's uh, thinking is at. He's kind of leaning in uh, to new voter groups, kind of carving off some of those voter groups, particularly from the Democratic base, but also someone who is going to face the spotlight of politics, a place she hasn't been uh, because she hasn't had to really face much of that scrutiny. It'll be interesting to see how that all develops and if they can get on the ballot in a certain number of states. They need to get on the ballot uh, in, in at least six states, if not something like 15 to 18, which is their goal. And if that happens, it's really going to be interesting to see. And tell us your thoughts on this, on the impact, you know, this third party will have on Biden and Trump as we move forward. Yeah, Jenna, I think one thing to pay attention to is what happens in states like Georgia or Michigan. We've seen some votes that have happened in Minnesota, Washington, Michigan, and Georgia uh, that have been kind of contrarian or difficult for Democrats, uh, particularly on issues around with young people around Gaza and what's happening uh, there with Israel. And, and the Biden team, student loans, variety of different issues that have been uh, difficult to draw out their base and build up enthusiasm. This is exactly what Kennedy wants to tap into. You then have uh, Donald Trump in and out of courtrooms. They'll go after that as well. They're trying to get a voter segment and create this third party called We the People that can be out there and provide an alternative. If that happens in those key states, Donald Trump has tapped out at about 46, 47 percent. Joe Biden's going to have lower enthusiasm. He'll be down. And then that provides a place where a third party candidate, like in 2000, like in 2016, can be. Uh, Contra consequential uh, can be a, a wrecking ball for Democrats in their attempt to get reelected uh, for Joe Biden or to really win the White House. This is what we saw with Ralph Nader. This is the worry with Jill Stein or Cornell West. And this is Kennedy's lane kind of moving forward to be consequential as that potential wrecking. Ball. But this is going to be the problem for Kennedy. And I think it's the Democrats only move. They are going to try to keep him off the ballot in all 50 states because, of course, they believe in democracy. And nothing says we believe in democracy more than keeping another choice off the ballot. And here's how they're going to do it. And, you know, up to this point, Kennedy, he's been working with the Libertarian Party to get on some ballots under their banner. And that is a pretty good fit. I mean, Kennedy obviously isn't perfectly Libertarian. But again, if we're, if we're honest, it's pretty damn near impossible to be perfectly Libertarian. But anyway, now he has picked the perfect candidate to siphon young, coerced, idealistic, progressive voters away from Joe but she might be a little too wacky for the average state libertarian party. You know, politics does make for strange bedfellows. I'll give it that. But this is going to be a test for sure. Hey, you haven't 
so far in our conversation had high praise for his choice. You might think she's a fine person, uh, but she doesn't align with your values as libertarians. Is this choice of Nicole Shanahan disqualifying uh, for RFK Jr. Uh, to gain the nomination of your party? I can't personally say that it's disqualifying, but it doesn't right out of the gate seem like it's going to do a lot to help. I think that he's going to have to really show us, and she certainly will as well, that they care about individual and economic freedom in particular, and that they want to continue to be, you know, they want to be our standard bearers. And I certainly understand, you know, that they're not going to come into alignment with us on every single issue. And mm -hmm. that's happened before in the past with, with candidates like Gary Johnson and Bill Weld. But, you know, the appetite in the party for someone like Bill Weld right now is yeah. not very strong. We want someone who's going to be radical. That should be a pretty interesting convention. And I hope they put that one on TV. We'll probably be able to find it on YouTube somewhere. But I don't really see how a person like Shanahan could possibly convince an entire building full of libertarians that she cares about personal freedoms and cares about economic liberty. I don't really see that happening. I think they'll have to find a different path, find a different way to come to terms or whatever. But they're going to have to find a different way. The Democrats, on the other hand, I don't think they know how to find a different way. I don't think they know how to use a different approach. You know, they've been attacking Kennedy from the very beginning. I mean, they literally chased the guy out of the Democrat Party, an actual Kennedy chased out of the Democrat Party. And he just won't go away. I think they thought he would go away, but they haven't learned their lessons, you know. And if they were planning on rigging the primaries in the first place, why didn't they just humor the guy? And why didn't they just keep him around? But, you know, now this is where we are. And when it's a three-way matchup, when it's two, when it's a two-way matchup, uh, President Trump versus President Biden, Trump beats Biden by 1.6 percent. When it's a three-way matchup, Trump beats Biden by over five percentage points. This has the other uh, third-party candidates in it as well. So you could see why the DNC and the Biden campaign are what is being described as in panic mode right now. Because of the initial thought, here's an example. Here's the state senator, Mallory uh, McMorrow, says this. Him being in the race means that there is a greater likelihood that Donald Trump will become president again. Kennedy should be smart enough to know better, but I don't think he does. I think his ego's in the way. Now, the problem is, and the reason why uh, this is another congressman, say Congressman Mark Garcia says, I'm personally offended and just disgusted by his campaign. Oh, that's nice. Uh, I didn't know he needed your approval. Right now, he's only on in, in <laughs> Utah, but he's got to do a special thing for almost every state, and he's got a team doing it, mm -hmm. one of which is get a running mate. Mm -hmm. He did not necessarily want to do a running mate now, no. but for isn't it funny, man? They, they say that RFK running is a product of his ego. And honestly, I think it's a product of President Biden's ego. President Biden has been the worst president in probably all of our entire history. And just look at any of his accomplishments. I mean, whether it's Ukraine or Afghanistan, persecution of political opponents, or my favorite lately, being let off the hook by his own Justice Department because he's allegedly senile. I mean, take your pick. Any one of those things, or probably a couple dozen others, would keep a normal thinking person that actually does love our country from even thinking about a second term. The only reason you have so many people coming out to try and stop this guy is because he's a clear and present danger. Anyone who can see with their own eyes and still form their own thoughts from within their own brain can see this. I mean, no matter what side they're on, they can see it. As far as Congressman Mark Garcia is concerned, <laughs> he's disgusted and offended. That's pretty impressive. That's big words, man. I think every time I end up showing him on this channel, I'm also going to show this. Here they are. Donald Trump actually has said that he wants to build alligator moats along the border. That's one of his incredible ideas. Another idea that Donald Trump has promoted is he actually wants to electrify the border fence and maybe even put some spikes on the border. That's another Donald Trump and MAGA majority border idea. Another idea which I'm not sure how, how well it would go, is he wants to actually bomb northern Mexico with missiles. That's another Trump idea. And finally, I think one of the ones that I think um, is the most grotesque is suggestions that instead we should maybe just shoot migrants in the legs as they cross. Yeah, I want sharks of freaking laser beams, people. Sharks of freaking laser beams, yeah. This is the guy who is offended and disgusted by uh, the candidacy of a Kennedy. These are not serious people, man. Good old alligator moat guy. You can't make this stuff up, guys, but that's just my take. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. If you haven't already, be a part of our growth. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe. Most importantly, share the channel. I'll see you in the next one.